Hello there, and welcome back to my channel. It is of course only me again, and thank you so much for joining me out on another metal detecting adventure. So in today's video, I came to an old permission of mine in hopes to do a pasture field. The cows have recently come out of the field, and because it's been grazed, the grass was nice and short, and it was a good opportunity for me to get back in there. However, on arriving to the permission this morning, I noticed that the field next door had recently been ploughed and drilled and is looking absolutely perfect to do a bit of detecting in. Now, I've never been in this field before, so I don't know what it's gonna produce, but the field next door, which is the pasture field, has produced many, many nice finds, including some really nice medieval bits as well. So we're gonna give this a go today and hopefully we can get some nice finds to show you on the camera but it is the end of July now and we are in the midst of a heat wave. It is incredibly hot today. They are looking at highs of 28 to 29 degrees. So it's going to be baking. I've packed water, I've packed sun cream, but we're just gonna have a nice gentle stroll around this plowed field, see if we can get any nice finds up. And if not, well, we've always got the pasture field next door to have a look in as well. So thanks very much for watching my videos. It really does mean the world to me. And of course, if you like this sort of content and you like metal detecting videos, then just hit that subscribe button below because I upload a new video every single week. And do drop me a thumbs up, that does help the channel grow as well. But let's get some uh, digging done underneath the hot sun. I'll catch all of you on the very first hole. Well, it's that time of the day where we have come down on our very first target. And I know what you're all thinking, hang on, that's not a ploughed field. Well, you're absolutely right. I went into the ploughed field originally, but noticed that the seedlings were actually all coming up all over the field. And to be honest, I just didn't want to disturb them. It's uh, someone else's livelihood. I'll let them have that. And I can just go into this pasture field next door, which is where we originally planned to come. But Got my very first target, have a listen. Now that's coming up at about 66 to 68. And if I move around on the target, still clear, still 66 to 68, regardless of which way around I tackle it. So chances are, this is gonna be quite a good one, but it could also be a shotgun shell or something like that. Let's give it a dig. So whatever it is, is very close to the top. And this is what it is. Doesn't look like anything identifiable, that's for sure. Um, just looks like a lump of sort of, uh, yeah, like a sort of coppery iron mix or something like that. So that is not a very exciting target at all. Um, that is the first target though. It's not the best start of the day, but let's keep pushing on. So we have target number two and I've dug the hole and found the target in this lovely little surprise ball here. Now have a listen to this, absolutely lovely 73 to 74 on the target identification. There we go, that is an absolute screamer. So let's open it up together and see what we've got. Oh no, <laughs> it is a tag, it's a copper tag. Um, Oh, I think these uh, these rivet things were used for sort of temporary fences and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, that could have been anything. That could have been a coin. That could have literally have been a lovely artifact. But unfortunately, on this occasion, it's a copper tag. OK, we have just gone and found another little surprise ball. This is obviously going to be one of those sort of fields where because it's been pasture for a reasonable amount of time, and definitely, definitely was an arable field at some stage in history, any of the finds have sort of clumped together with the finer soil 
the, the finer soil is what's left over from when it was ploughed and when it was arable. And then what happens is, is they kind of stick themselves to the fines and they end up sort of rolling around a little bit and then just staying put. And they end up just in these really nice, neat little sort of surprise egg type things. Um, but have a listen to this. That is an absolutely stunning sort of 73 to 74 again. The only difference with this one is it's ever so subtly sort of revealing itself on the side, like a lady of the night. Um, so come in, have a look. Let's see what we've got here because it looks relatively interesting. Just don't know until we crack it open. Okay, so here is the surprise egg of goodness. And if you look very carefully, you can see two small little green things just poking out of the side there. So is it gonna be something good? Is it gonna be something rubbish? Let's reveal it and have a look because right now, oh, well, whatever it is, I've just broken it. So that's not a great start. Oh, what is that? So that looks to me like it's got glass inside of it. Is this once part of a sort of um, telescope or something like that? Hmm not really too sure there's a there's a few more parts to it here um, so I'll have to uh, take a closer look but this is the main part here and as you can see it's got a piece of glass in the middle of it um, so I don't really know what that would be but it was highly uh, gilt at one point and covered in gold but what was it your guess is as good as mine so I'll try and get all the other bits out of the clod um, clean it up a bit later Put, maybe put a picture of it on the video if it turns out to be anything of noteworthy. But yeah, there's that one. Early days yet. Let's go and find some more. Take a look at this absolutely splendid button, which has just come out of the ground now. Now, it's obviously quite a big target. It's made of copper alloy, but my goodness, this was completely ear bursting. This is the sort of target you're gonna be digging every day, day in and day out, no problems at all. And it's a huge copper alloy one, probably about three or four inches below the ground, so it wasn't tremendously deep. But yep, again, we're in a field that's been done before and we're still finding the nice bits. So take a little listen to this target here. It's a faint one, but that, is a really sweet little tone. Now that's coming up about 81 to 83. It's not as clean as I like, so it could be aluminium, but it also could be a really nice silver coin. So I think we're definitely gonna have to dig this one out and see what we've got. Well, the target has come out and boy, it was deep. It was super, super deep. Um, quite a lot of soil came out. I did kind of uh, miss pinpoint it a little bit, which didn't help, but it was in the side of the hole and it was still relatively deep. And guys, we have just gone and found a really cool looking little silver coin here. And I, I have no idea what it is. Absolutely no idea. But um, I knew it would be a silver target. It was just that nice, sweet, gentle whispery little high tone coming through and we've picked it up nice and deep come and have a look okay so right now as it stands i have no idea what it is but look how small that little coin is and it came out just in such amazing condition as well but you can clearly see it's got some very very intricate sort of markings on it um, it's almost got the figure of somebody standing there. Um, I don't know if this is a British coin. I honestly have never seen a coin like this. I mean, it's absolutely tiny, 
but I have seen markings like this before and at first I thought it might be like a sort of little commonwealth halfpenny or threepence or something like that but I'm not 100% too sure. I have no idea what it is but it's an absolutely stunning thin little hammered coin that is for sure and uh, it's going to be good fun finding out what this one is. Once I give it a clean up when I get back home I will of course um, put a nice picture of it on the video and once I found out what it is I will attach that details to it as well but what a great start this morning in this searing heat. So take a look at this amazing little pot leg that's just come out of the ground here. Oh, isn't that a little dainty one? That is so pretty. So, so pretty. So you can see it's got the sort of decoration on this side. Other side's completely flat. And at the top here is where it uh, connected to the bronze pot. So that is a really nice example. And I would probably say that this pot leg is maybe, I don't know, 1500s, maybe even 1400s, something like that. So it's most certainly medieval, but yeah, absolutely banging target under the ground, 83 to 84. You were gonna dig this one every day of the week and it was a pot leg, so I don't blame you. So we've got another really nice target down here and that is coming up at about 50 to 51 but it's just a super clean target no matter what direction you go from you're going to be digging this one all day long now of course this could be a number of things this could be a piece of lead could be an aluminium bottle top something like that but you have to dig these there's no way you can leave them in the ground so let's give this one a go hopefully it's none of the aforementioned So unfortunately, it is most certainly one of the aforementioned finds. It's just a little blob of lead. No details, nothing like that, so yeah. But again, you have to dig these types of signals because they could be absolutely anything. Small hammered coins come up in the low 50s range, even gold and things like that. So it's just lead on this occasion, but hopefully if we keep going, it might be something a bit better. So this find has just popped out of the ground and uh, it's quite interesting. So I actually think I know what this is. Um, it's nothing really of sort of noteworthiness, but essentially what it is, is it's the old insert to a watering can. Um, because you can tell, because of course it's got all those little perforated holes in it going all the way around there. And that would have sat inside of the spout and obviously the water would have come through those holes. So yeah, anything round like that with perforated holes evenly all around the surface has to be a watering can insert. So again, <laughs> nothing incredibly noteworthy, nothing worth phoning the FLO about, but an interesting little find and one that I knew what it was. So we have got another find down here and uh, it was probably about sort of three to four inches below so it was just on the other side of the plug. It was one of those finds that you sort of upturn the plug and it was lying right there on the bottom. Now, it looks relatively interesting, but I haven't really picked any of the mud off of it yet. So let's just do that together really gently because it looks like it's got some really interesting markings on it, but it also seems really delicate as well. Okay. There we go. Take a look at that. What is that? Well, it's very delicate, isn't it? Very intricate. Um, would have had some really pretty colors on it as well at one point. And it does look like it possibly was gilded as well. So this would have been super shiny, would have looked like gold, quite thin, quite dainty, but interesting, very interesting. Was it like a, ornate hairpin something like that uh, was it part of a toy car no I don't think it was part of a toy car uh, but you never know you never know but yeah it could be some type of brooch type thing 
but not really too sure on this one to be honest it's obviously broken so it's not the whole of the item but yeah it's another really really nice find so i'll clean this one up and um, hopefully be able to show you some of the detail on it a little bit better as well but uh, another find in this baking hot field let's keep going see what else comes out Come and take a look at this super cool hexagonal button. Now, I obviously thought this was a 50 pence because 50 pence are shaped almost exactly the same as this. But when I turned it over, I saw the shank. So of course it can't be a 50 pence, but it is a really nice pewter button with a really nice little central decoration there of what looks to be a rose. So it's just a button, but it was super, super deep and it's got nice decoration on it. So that's not too bad, is it? Not too bad at all. But I am learning that today, because the ground is so dry and it's so hot, targets aren't sounding like they would is if you were in a field that had been, you know, ploughed or if it was wet and it had been raining recently. Very, very different sounding targets indeed. But we're still picking out good targets and we're still hearing the nice sounds and we're getting the goods. We just need to wait for something else to come out that's going to be awesome as well. So let's keep going. Okay, so we've had another target and check this out. This was a super, super loud target and it was pretty deep here in this field. However, pulling it out has revealed it looks like some sort of buckle fragment, doesn't it? But look how intricate that is. That is so, so detailed. And on the other side, it's completely flat. So it's not sort of pattern stamped or anything like that. But is this a buckle fragment? A really, really decorative one? Well, it's sure, certainly a, you know, a good suggestion. But honestly, I have absolutely no idea. No idea. I'm thinking that this is the corner and then it would have come along here, gone down here and gone back around there. So if it is a buckle fragment, it certainly could be medieval, but more likely sort of post medieval, something like that. But really, really nice detail on here, really intricate. This thing would have been, you know, a special thing back in its day for sure. And you can most certainly guarantee that it would have been gilded and stuff like that as well. So yeah. It's uh, another find in this field. It is absolutely sweltering today. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to go for, but I'm going to do my very best. And if anything else comes out, I will, of course, show you straight away. OK, so we are now at the end of this fantastic day's metal detecting. It has been super duper hot today. Um, honestly, digging holes in this field has just been so much more work than it needed to. It would have been great if we could have gone into that ploughed field because we wouldn't have needed the spade and we wouldn't have needed to be digging holes a foot down in order to retrieve targets. We could have just kicked along the top, picked out the targets. It would have been nice and easy. But saying that, if we had gone into the ploughed field, we wouldn't have found all the amazing things that we have found today. So I'm happy with everything we found and I really hope you've enjoyed seeing everything come out of the ground today. And guys, if you like metal detecting videos and content and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? There's going to be plenty more videos coming your way on this channel. So do consider to subscribe. But of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. And if you've liked today's video and you like the content in general, do drop me a thumbs up. That means a lot. But I'm going to go home now, sit in the fridge for an hour and I will catch you all on the very next video.